ladies, your man wants to live on a boat and you're not too sure. So you've been watching a whole bunch of sailing YouTube channels to see what it's really like. And that's all great and fun because they show you the amazing parts of it. The blue waters, the bikinis, the drinks, the fun with friends. But today I'm going to tell you the 13 things that those other videos aren't telling you and your man isn't telling you either. First thing is the boat is always moving. As you can see right now in the video, we are on anchor. We're not really rocking that much. Sometimes it rocks a lot. And the first two months that I was living on board, my legs hurt so bad from just the balancing act of standing up. It's kind of like being on an airplane with the turbulence. You're standing in the bathroom trying to flip your pants and wash your hands and bracing yourself and constantly moving back and forth. That's how it is sometimes eight to 10 10 hours depending on where you are where you're anchored and if you're on a passage or not so if you haven't started working out now start working out number two is we have a limited water supply on the boat on our boat we have five tanks of water which hold about 188 gallons and we use that water showering flushing the toilet drinking cooking brushing our teeth washing our hands we used to carry on drinking water in five gallon jugs which got a bit overwhelming with taking the dinghy to shore and loading it up. Can't really do that on bicycles. So we installed a water purifier before our water supply lasted about three weeks. Now it's gonna last a little bit shorter because we're actually drinking the water in the tanks now, which before we didn't. Because of the low water supply, we often shower at the marinas when we are at a marina because we can take a long shower. It saves our water supply for other things. Sometimes it's more important to use the water in our tanks for flushing the toilet or cooking rather than showering so yes we do not shower every day like you might be used to on land number three is hot water when we do shower on the boat we have to heat the water up unless we are okay with a cold shower I want a warm shower which takes about 20 minutes or so it means remembering to turn that on before I make my tea and stretch and then about that time the water is is the perfect temperature for me to take a shower. Number four is that you will rarely use your hair dryer, your curling iron, or your hair straightener. I know, I love to get dressed up too and do my hair and makeup, but in reality, I found that the time effort it takes to do it is washed out by the dinghy ride or the weather. It's just easier, even if you have enough power on board. We just installed our solar panels and lithium batteries, so we have plenty of power that I could use those every single day, but it's just not worth my time and effort. Number five is that there is limited storage space on the boat. Spare parts, tools, and safety equipment take up most of that space, and you will not win the argument that your clothing is more important than any of those things. Believe me, they are more important than your clothes. Which brings us to the next point, number six, is you will not need all your clothing. I know that's hard to say, but you won't. I brought so many clothes onto the boat, stuffed my lockers, and every little inch and nook and cranny with all of my clothes that I felt I needed and two, three months later, I took off probably half. Six months later, I took another half off and still, I probably still don't wear half of my clothes. I could probably go down more. Don't tell Steven. Also gotten rid of all my silk and dry clean only clothes because really this is a wash and wear lifestyle. You will not want to send your clothes out to a dry cleaner at a port and then wait at the port for them to get it back to you. Number seven is laundry. We don't have laundry facilities on our boat. So every time we do laundry, we have to lug it off to shore and find a laundromat. Some marinas have laundry facilities, which is great. Sometimes it's a hassle because they only take quarters so we're running around trying to find enough quarters sometimes they use credit cards sometimes they use apps on your phone so you have to download an app before we go into the last few items make sure you like subscribe share and comment below number eight is housekeeping you will be your own housekeeper I have been doing most of the cleaning on board and the cooking because frankly, I don't want to help out with the boat chores, the actual cleaning the hull, repairing the engine and doing all that stuff that Steven really loves to do and is good at it. Number nine is the galley is small. The, the interesting thing about them is that the countertops also double as doors to the under cabinet storage compartments and to the refrigerators. I'm constantly moving things 
comes back and forth when I'm preparing food because I forgot to get an ingredient out or now I want to put that ingredient away to have more space on the countertop so I'm moving things around maybe I forgot to get a pot or pan out from the storage compartment it's just a different way of working around the obstacles in the kitchen and working with a small kitchen and depending on how small your boat is you might not be able to fit all your food in the galley I have been on other boats where they put food in all different places on the boat wherever they can find I've seen food in bathroom cabinets underneath the seat cushions and in the bedroom you have to have food you'll find a place to keep it for 10 you will need foul weather gear most of them aren't flattering to a woman's body but they keep us warm I did not want to spend money on foul weather gear because frankly I don't think they're very attractive and they're not the colors that look good on me but one of the reasons for them is safety and if you go overboard the brighter neon colors are easier to spot in the water so I bought a red one not a color that would look good on me 12 is bugs eeks I know there's bugs on a boat flies mosquitoes gnats and even cockroaches yes I made a screen for our door to keep the bugs out when we're in areas where the bugs are but we still get an occasional bug inside and we did get cockroaches on our boat I know weird when we were in marina for several months we actually saw them walking on the lines onto the boat gross and the last one is mold. We all have to deal with mold on a boat. It is part of the territory. We're usually in warmer climates. There's less airflow on a boat, so that brings in the mold. I have seen mold on the bathroom countertops appear overnight. I have seen it on clothing pieces. And so that's another reason why you might want to pare down your wardrobe so that there's more air going through the lockers that you keep your clothes in so it prevents the, the mold from growing. I've seen it on leather belts, shoes, purses, and clothing pieces. So that's my 13 items. I hope this has been helpful for you and gives you a better overall picture of what you're looking at if you are trying to decide whether it is right for you to live on board or not. Remember, like, subscribe, share, comment below, let me know what your situation is and there's a link below also to get our free guide or your three steps how to live your dream life on a sailboat. Bye!